My name is Marzia, and this is how I found the truth. I grew up in an Islamic country where all uh, religious minorities uh, are persecuted, and I found Jesus more than 20 years ago. Since my childhood, I always loved God and I was seeking the truth. I was about uh, between 17 to 18 years old that for the first time, God spoke to me through one of my dreams. In that dream, I was praying to the sky. Suddenly the sky opened and a white horse came down and told me, sit on my back. As I held its neck, I felt uh, an amazing love through that white horse that pouring into me with a power and purity I had never experienced in my life. After we were safe, the horse took me to a road and that road goes to the sky and suddenly I awoke. The love that I experienced in that um, dream was so amazing that I could not compare with any love in this world. For weeks, every night, I was crying because I wanted to be with him. I wanted to experience that love again and again. It was after um, uh, one or two years that one of my friends who has converted to Christianity talked to me uh, about Jesus for the first time. Uh, when she told me about Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins to save us, I could not believe. In Islam, they teach us that Jesus was only a prophet uh, who came to this uh, world and he is like other human, human beings. Uh, but what my friend was sharing about Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of, uh, son of God, was unbelievable. So I decided, I took the Bible from my friend and uh, because I was curious, I was seeking the truth. I wanted to find the truth. One day I knelt and prayed a simple prayer. I told God, if Jesus is the truth, you must guide me to the right path and save me from being misguided because I don't know what is the truth in this world. There are a lot of things in this world, a lot of faiths, a lot of religions, but you are my God, you created me and you know what is the truth. If Jesus is the truth, uh, guide me to the right path and save me from being misguided. It was after that simple prayer that miracles started happening uh, in my life. Uh, for the first time, I had the experience of healing. I was very a kind of, you know, headstrong, uh, stubborn person. I just wanted to make sure about everything. That's why I, I told him that I told God, you should uh, prove to me everything. I, I don't want to have any doubts uh, about Jesus. And I remember one day I was just praying. I was alone. I was praying to God. Uh, and suddenly I received the flames of Holy Spirit. And I started uh, praying in tongues uh, without any control. And uh, it was the first time ever in my life that I could feel the presence of God right in front of me. While this happened for a few seconds, I saw Jesus in front of me. He was uh, standing uh, right in front of me uh, in white clothes. And beside him, there was a big throne which was covered with shining gold and jewels. And at that time, I felt that God had removed the curtain before my eyes. Now I could see the truth very clear about Jesus, and I had no doubts. After I gave my heart to Jesus, I shared this message with my family members. In 2005, I traveled to Turkey uh, to study uh, about Christianity, to learn more about, you know, Jesus, because in Iran it's not possible. And it was in Turkey uh, that I met my uh, close friend, Mariam, my best friend. After finishing uh, some theology and leadership courses in Turkey, we decided to return to Iran because we both had this uh, had separate experiences with Jesus. We we experienced His love and uh, we saw many miracles. That's why we wanted to give this message to our people. 
Uh, when we returned, I remember for the first few months, we didn't know what to do. We just uh, started praying because um, in Iran, especially for women, uh, it's much more harder because women don't have equal freedom uh, like men. But we prayed and we trusted God and we became sure that we need to uh, give Bibles uh, to people because uh, in Iran, people cannot have a Bible. I called my pastor who was in London and uh, I asked him to send thousands of Bibles to Iran. And when I told him, he was shocked and he told me, Marzi, are you serious? You need thousands of Bibles? And I told him, please trust us because it is not about us and we believe God wanted us to do that. Uh, we took the map of Tehran and we put it on the wall and we decided to distri distribute Bibles in each area in Tehran. Every night we would carry uh, about uh, 140 New Testaments in our backpacks and just walking in the streets and visiting one area and put those New Testaments in, uh, in, in the mailboxes. Praise God, after almost three years, uh, we could distribute 20,000 uh, New Testaments in each part of uh, Tehran. It was 2009 that, uh, you know, some people had reported about some of our activities and uh, Mariam and I got arrested. I received a phone call from a security police and they called me. They told me there are, there are some issues about my car documents and they asked me to go to the police station. But when I went to the police station, they told me you are here because uh, some, some of our guards saw you sharing Bibles with people and he asked me, are you a Christian? And I said uh, immediately, yes, of course I'm a Christian. Immediately they handcuffed me and they didn't allow me to call Mariam to let her know. They took me back to the to apartment to ransack every, every, everything and they found uh, hundreds of Bible in our apartment and they called their boss and told them that we found the source here. We were praying in our hearts that God protect those uh, Bibles in the basement and praise God they didn't uh, even think about, uh, you know, searching the basement. And they took both of us to the security police. They uh, locked us in a very dirty, uh, dark uh, cell in the, in the basement and they told us that we are going to ask lots of questions and you have uh, you have to tell us the truth, uh, otherwise we will beat you until you vomit blood. But I, I remember when I was talking to them, I could hear my words that how powerful I was talking to them, even though I had so much fear. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that uh, didn't allow my weakness, my fear to be shown to them. At midnight, they transferred us to uh, another jail and praise God, they didn't, you know, uh, torture us physically. And they transferred us to a jail, a small uh, jail for 14 days. We were there. There was dirt everywhere. It was dark, very small cells. We could not see the light. We didn't have uh, clean water to drink. We had to sleep on a cold concrete floor. We didn't have, uh, you know, uh, clean blankets to cover ourselves. We had to use blankets that were soaked in urine. We faced many difficulties when we were in uh, prison. The government put pressure on us. They told us you can just write one sentence and re renounce your faith, then you would be set free. But we refused because we both experienced uh, Jesus' love and uh, it was an honor to suffer for our faith. One of the worst experiences that we had in prison was the execution of other prisoners. They separated us and they uh, sent me to a cell. Uh, and after a week, they took one of my cellmates and they executed her in order to show me uh, what will be the cost of our resistance. We uh, both experienced the, you know, the execution of our best friend, Shirin Alam Huli. She was a political prisoner. Shirin's only wishes was to live in a free country and to have her own rights as a woman. And even the government didn't give back her body to her family. But praise God, we had, you know, many great opportunities to share the message of salvation with many prisoners. 
we changed Evan Prison, the darkest place, into our church. And that was an honor for both of us to suffer for our faith. My name is Marzia and this is how I found the truth.